they were fascinated to see that the ice caps grew and receded with each year. Large areas changed color with the seasons. Did that mean vegetation? Straight lines were sighted on the planet's surface. Some called them canals. The American astronomer Percival Lowell believed that these Martian canals had been created by an advanced technological civilization. First in 1965 and then again in 1969, NASA sent spacecraft to fly by Mars and send back scientific measurements and close-up photographs. This is picture 21, a red picture, wide-angle picture, fantastic picture. That's beautiful. That's well, beautiful. Look at those little craters. Margot. This is a narrow-angle camera view. The Mariner missions were great achievements for the scientists. But the pictures of Mars showed a world of total desolation. Was Mars less like the Earth then and more like the moon? There were no canals, no cities, no areas of cultivation, no signs of upheaval or layering in the Martian crust to indicate that the planet was active or evolving geologically. The pictures revealed no volcanoes to spew out gases that could enrich the atmosphere. And water, so essential to life, seemed to be present only in traces. The atmosphere was so thin as to make the possibility of life seem even more remote. For the fans of science fiction, not very exciting. But for scientists, the whole excitement is finding out the facts. That's the whole name of the game. Now, these first flybys had revealed only some of the facts. But all the same, the exploration of Mars and of all the other planets of the solar system was actually getting underway. I can't, I can't feel that any person with any soul can look out on that universe that surrounds us and can imagine the immensity of it and the history of it without being rather impressed with the idea that we as little atoms made of the same stuff those stars are made of have the capability to regard the other part of the universe. One piece of the universe has the ability to look at another part of the universe and wonder about it. That's a very amazing thing, and it brings into one's mind all kinds of thoughts about religion and philosophy and so on. But don't ask me about life on Mars, okay? In the fictional Martian story in the War of the Worlds, it was understood that the Martians were fighting for their own survival. Their planet was growing so cold and inhospitable that they might perish if they remained. Well, real life confined to such a planet would fight for survival by trying to change itself, by evolving. Every living thing on Earth has evolved from the lowly, the invisibly small microbe. Given nourishment, the microbe will grow colonies so vast that they rapidly become visible to the eye. Here on our planet, microbes have adapted to survive the most hostile conditions. Arid deserts, the frozen Himalayas, in trenches under thousands of tons of pressure in the ocean deeps. Biologists at Ames Laboratory are discovering adaptive capabilities in life forms that a few years ago would have been regarded as fantastic within the cooling systems of atomic reactors organisms have been discovered flourishing where radiation could be expected to destroy any living thing in hospitals that use ultraviolet for sterilization strains have been found resistant to the killing radiation biologists are growing organisms in salt solutions in acids, in alkalines, in ammonia gas, in boiling hot springs, in ice that is thawed for part of every day. In the vacuum of a space simulator, life forms have been flourishing for years without oxygen.
scientists are studying the kinds of environments that could challenge life forms on the planets and moons of the solar system. In 1971, Mariner 9 arrived at Mars, equipped to go into orbit and stay for a while. A good thing, too, because when it arrived, Mars' surface was obscured by a global dust storm. As the storm abated, a whole new Mars began to make its appearance. The first feature that swam into view, poking up through the dust, appeared to be a huge impact crater. But it stood miles above the Martian lowlands on the peak of an immense mountain, Nix Olympica. And as the dust settled further, the stunning truth emerged that the mountain on Mars was indeed a gigantic volcano. So geologically, Mars was not a dead planet after all. Vast stretch marks on the planet showed that Mars' surface is shifting and changing on a colossal scale. Mars is beginning to look, geologically at least, more like the Earth and less like the Moon. And then new evidence of water has begun to turn up in surprising ways. Among the many clouds in the Martian atmosphere, some have been found to be composed of water. Then close-ups of the surface have begun to turn up strange, sinuous patterns. Some compare with the patterns cut into the surface of our own planet by the Mississippi River. Slowly the interpretation emerged that only a fluid flowing continuously over the Martian surface could have caused such patterns at erosion. Some scientists didn't agree, but astronomer Carl Sagan theorized that Mars indeed contained a great deal more water than we'd supposed. The water might remain locked within its crust as permafrost during ice age times such as the present, but during cycles of warmth, when the polar caps release gases to form a heavier atmosphere, the water may be released into clouds. Such clouds could bathe the planet in rains for thousands and perhaps millions of years. If Sagan's interpretation is correct, life could have originated on Mars in favorable cycles and may have adapted itself to harsher conditions as they developed and indeed may exist on Mars to this day. Exobiologists are studying other environments even as they prepare to search directly for life beyond the planet Earth. Flying by Jupiter, Pioneer 10 confirmed estimates that within its atmosphere are combinations of gases similar to those in which life originated on Earth. While a second Pioneer is being aimed to curve past Jupiter and fly by Saturn, Earth-based measurements show that a moon of Saturn, nearly the size of the planet Mercury, contains an atmosphere, water, and surprising warmth.